I think that is a very wrong kind of a thought process because radiation is given by X-rays which are painless. So the process of radiation is not painful. Again, that is a misconception. Uh, radiation is required definitely for a certain percentage of patients and that may vary between 50 to 80 percent of all cancers depending upon their stage and the type of cancer. But not all cancers will need radiation. Radiotherapy, like I said, is given by X-rays which are administered from far away or by keeping a source of radiation within the patient but it does not make you radioactive unlike the radioactivity treatment which is given with nuclear medicine products. I think that's not correct because radiation is a very localized and focal treatment and is precisely delivered to the area, targeted to the area where it is needed. So it does not get delivered to the whole body unless a patient like a child with blood cancer who needs whole body radiation will be delivered whole body radiation as a primer or as a conditioning regime before the bone marrow transplant. I think I'm really frightened to hear that but with radiation if it is given on the head then the hair loss will occur from the head if the whole brain or whole of the head is treated. But if only a partial area is getting treatment then the hair loss may occur in that small area and will come back in three months. And the skin loss and bone loss is not known with the present methods of radiation. It was there about 50, 60, 100 years ago when uh, mega voltage was not available and deep x-rays were being used. But that is an era of 1940s, 50s, almost you know 80 years ago. If it's being administered to the area of stomach or intestines, then it can cause nausea and vomiting. But then the patient is advised to take certain foods and also given anti-nausea medicine before taking radiation to prevent this side effect. Otherwise, there is no nausea vomiting. Again, that's a huge myth because there are certain cancers where the trials have proven, especially for brain tumors, breast cancer, prostate cancer, that the patient will need radiation depending upon what is the final stage of the patient. So to prevent a cancer from coming back after surgery, soft tissue sarcomas is another case. Pediatric tumors like Wilms tumor or Ewing sarcoma, they will need radiation after surgery provided they have adverse pathology features. There's a little bit of a grain of truth there because radiation is itself a carcinogenic or it causes cancer. But if we look at the cosmic background radiation which we get exposed to while we are on this earth or when we are taking an air flight, we do get exposed to radiation. And the radiation that's given in a focal manner, it can lead to only 2.2 per 100,000 extra cancers. So if we look at the risk versus benefit ratio, it's hugely in favor of patients because they would not be alive. 15 to 20 years later, if they had not received radiation for curing the cancer, they would have succumbed to the cancer. So the excess risk of radiation-induced cancers is only 2.2 per 100,000 patients who have been exposed to radiation. So it's very minuscule.